I've handled a lot of real medieval mail. This is as good as modern made mail is gonna get. Now is the moment. Yes. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop here, and we're back with another film from Arrows vs. Armour 2, again with Toby Capwell, Augusto Berbrandt, so our historian and our armourer. But in this case, actually, not only is Toby a historian, he actually writes history books on armour, so he is explicitly qualified to talk about this. These two guys know so much more about it than I do, so I'm going to hand over to them very quickly and really let them take it forward. But what we're doing today is we are looking at the mail that we are going to be using for our upcoming test. And we have a sample of commercially available mail, and we have a sample of the highest quality handmade mail that we can get. Now we would love to have done the whole Hoburk in this high quality mail, but at a dollar a ring, a euro a ring, there is just neither the time or the money to be able to get a whole Hoburk for this film. So we have bought the best Hoburk that we can find, but how does that compare to the best quality mail that we could get? Well, we need to find out. We need to set that benchmark. So we're gonna test these two samples against each other, just as we've done in the other films. We'll shoot the arrows, we'll measure for the depth of penetration to try and work out which one is more resistant. So to support the mail, we put it onto a four layer linen and canvas backstop. That's sewn in, so it allows a little bit of protection as itself. But I think really now, over to you two guys. So Toby. Yeah, so mail is essentially fabric made out of metal. Depending on what type of link you use, you can vary the flexibility and the protectiveness of the material quite drastically. You can build mail that's really stiff and heavy and protective, but equally you can make mail that flows like silk and doesn't impede your movement at all. And mail is fantastically successful as a protective material. It's been around since at least 300 BC and it never really fell out of use. People working with sharp knives wear male gloves even today, male aprons and so forth. And of course, it's one of the most important forms of armor throughout the whole medieval period. Even as different rigid uh, plate armor is being introduced in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries, mail is always there. It never went away. There was no age of mail giving way to an age of plate. That never happened. Mail in the 15th century remains really important, so it's got to be uh, a central ingredient to our, to our test setup. We can't shoot at a real medieval hauberk, and replicating medieval mail to a high standard, as Todd said, is fantastically expensive. So we've got what we can work with practically, commercially made mail that's actually half riveted. That means that alternating rows of the links are riveted and then solid, punched out of sheet. And that's fine, that's accurate, that's real. It's sort of more of an earlier medieval thing. And later in the Middle Ages, they tend to go for all riveted. The really, really super nice uh, replica piece that's as close to shooting at the real thing as we can get is made by Phil Parks here in the UK. He's one of the world's very best mail makers. He's handmade every link, he's put it together, he's drifted the links, punched the holes, put the rivets in. This, I've handled a lot of real medieval mail in my museum curator's career. This is as good as modern made uh, mail is gonna get. So we really just wanna shoot at both of these and get a sense of how they perform. How well does the commercial mail do? Does the arrow just chew right through it? Does the high quality material stop the arrow? How much of a difference is there? That all feeds into the way we're going to interpret our shooting results with our, our full figure. From an armorer's standpoint, as far as the, the materials go, well, uh, what we, have you got to add, well, Augusto? We, as you mentioned, mail could still be the primary defense, even though even in the 15th century still. For example, the Aventail that we're going to shoot at tomorrow, which was made by Isaac Krog in Sweden, uh, is made of like these really thick, big, chunky rings, which are, I suspect, most likely going to stop almost anything coming at it. And underneath still, mm -hmm. we're going to have a um, mail collar still made by Phil Parks, which will also provide extra protection made of these tiny rings still with thick wire to make sure that even if something bypasses the Aventail, it's still gonna protect uh, the wearer. Yeah, these shooting pieces are just 
intended to give us a kind of a baseline. What's the basic relationship between commercial mail and the real thing? Well, thanks guys. I mean, it's really good to get the insiders track on that. Shall we get Joe shooting again? Yes. Let's go. This is the commercially available mail, Joe. So take it away. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. Dead right. on. Yes. Yes. Nice. Good. Yes. There you go. Yeah, that's nice. in. Good. Let's go. Yeah. Well, some nice shooting here by Joe again. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's actually quite a lot of interest. So I'm gonna avoid the mail for the moment because there's something else. So these two here just struck the textile armor on its own. And just, just poking out the back. Whereas when Joe was not shooting against the textile armor, when it's just the foam, they were clearing the back by quite a lot. So even that four layers has been enough to really slow the arrow quite a lot. So that's interesting, first of all. And now we come to our three through the mail. So I'm just gonna, it's a bit of a tricky one to measure, but. So 17 centimeters through the mail. 24 centimeters. and 19. Compared to the textile? Well, compared to the textile, 30, 28. Mm -hmm. So, there, I mean, it's interesting that there is clearly the male is doing something. Yeah. It's obviously not doing enough to stop you from being killed. But how much something does it do compared to the very high quality handmade? Well, we've got to find out now. Now is the moment. Yes. So now, Joe, you're going to be shooting against the very expensive handmade mail. So enjoy. Nice. Thank you. Still in trouble though, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah, that's on the very edge. Yep. That'll do. Okay. Good. All right, shall we go see? So we've got three good shots here on target. That's close to the edge, but it has gone clean through the links. It, it has. hasn't clipped the edge, so we're good with that. So, measuring off. So we have a depth of 23, 16, 16 and 13. Mm. Well, mm. that is a thing. So we have before 17, 24 and 19 depth. So this is a significant it's, improvement? It's obviously better. It's obviously better. It's still not going to save you. Whichever mail you are covering him with, be it that one, mm -hmm. or be it the commercially made one, mm -hmm. the fellow inside is going to get significantly injured mm -hmm. or killed because yeah. this is denser than flesh as well. Yeah. But let's also say that the mail we're testing here has, the, the maker is not trying expressly to defeat arrows. This mail is the supplemental defenses where you can't have anything better. But it's useful to know what the protective differences are between the real thing and what we're gonna put on our figure. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems to me that for our purposes, the commercially made male for the figure is just fine. The, the, the higher protective quality of the medieval male would matter a lot more when it's combat with hand weapons. Mm -hmm. And when it's, you know, the thrusts with spears 
and swords and things, that's when this male might stop it and the commercial male doesn't. Yes. No, I think that's very true. But the other thing is, the main difference here, as you were saying, alluding to, is the areas that you really do need to defend around the neck, there we have gone yeah. for the very heavy, the very accurately made, yeah. beautiful. And, and if you said to the same male maker, I want you to make me a primary defense that has to stop mm -hmm. arrows, he makes you a different material. Yeah. Something that's denser, heavier, more inflexible. And we've got that on the figure too. Yeah. So we've got some six in one weave under on the standard yeah. under the neck, yeah. which again is very different to this four in, weave, four in one style weave. And as well as the different weave on those primary defenses, we also have much more robust textile backings. So it's all about what the male maker is trying to achieve. So what we can take from this test is that the very high quality, very carefully made handmade male does perform better. And it's always fantastically interesting to know these things rather than just suspect it. And so in the sense of, would this be the game changer that keeps our man alive if he's hitting the armpit? No, it's not. But it's all this kind of information to see the difference between the commercially available and the really expensive, to see that difference that just allows us to feed the information back into our, into our thoughts, into our discussions, and ultimately into shooting our night. Because it's that that really gives us the insights and the understanding, things like this. And so again, it's an Arrows vs Armour 2 film, which has been funded by the kickstarting campaign. This, none of this would have been possible without the donors. So thank you so much for allowing us to understand these things so that when we do the main film, it's just so much richer for, for us all, really. So thank you very much. But there are other films out there in the Arrows vs Armour 2 series. Go check them out. <laughs>